What is going on guys? It is the Zoomer Value Investor here. Here to talk to you guys today about a company I am really, really excited about, Palantir Technologies. Now, before we go any further, um, I this is not financial advice. Um, I will never ever be offering financial advice on this channel. I'm an independent amateur researcher presenting for entertainment purposes only. With that being said, um, you know, why why even listen to this dude talk about Palantir like um, you know, what, what, why does he even care? Now, Palantir Technologies has grown to the second biggest holding in my personal, um, you know, all-encompassing portfolio. Um, now, I used to do a YouTube portfolio here. Um, I recently also switched that into a personal account, so I probably won't really essentially do that anymore because um, I'm, like, adding funds to it and doing a lot, a lot of, like, you know, moving around money a lot. It's too much to do just not for YouTube now. But, um yeah, th these are my top five biggest holdings, and Palantir has grown to number two. And uh, yeah, it's I kind of didn't foresee this to happen as fast as it did, but yet here we are. And um, I'm in this for the long haul. I, I'll tell y'all why in this video, but I'm really excited about this company. Now, I did sell a little bit of this here around the you know these highs, but um, I also saw the CEO sold a little bit. He sold a, no more than ten percent of his personal stake in the company. However, um, the media does this like FUD thing where they're like, Alexander Karp, CEO of Palantir Technologies, sells $300 million worth of shares. And uh, it's honestly to get y'all to kind of like sell the stock off. Like I think when he was sold, it was like right here. And then um, it was probably this drop right here, y'all, or something. And then you see this like rocket higher or he sold like here and it was like this drop right here. Something like that. So uh, it's just really silly because like it's as high as it's ever been as today. And the company is the best it's ever been is today. And as you can see here, it actually has a market cap of 89.5 or basically like 90 billion. So him selling like $300 million with a share, guys, like that's not, this company definitely sees that kind of volume um, in a day. Like it's not that big of a deal. It, it'll be a very short term effect when he does that. And the fundamentals are still intact. He still has um, maybe like 5 to 10% of the company. Like he owns 5 to 10% of the company still, even after that sale. So um, that's just, just him realizing some of his wealth and taking profits and it's not something i would pay too much attention to content is always the most important and media is going to spout so many narratives about stuff um so i'm going to try to or attempt to give y'all a just felt understanding of palantir here with this video very complex company to try to inter um, explain however i'll try to explain to y'all as if um y'all are a 12 year old so um think about uh you know there, there's private industry right and that would be um where Foundry. Foundry is, is really, that's where Foundry really tends to excel. So Foundry is one of Palantir's platforms and they do all types of like, they encompass all types of big data from companies, all their analytics, they take, um, they integrate it into their algorithms, their, their, um, their AI, and they can process very complex solutions, very intangible solutions, very deeper level solutions that this company, these companies might have not even foreseen, right? Um, and it's very interesting how they do this. Now, um, it's very integral for things like Airbus and also like energy companies, also the different financial institutions use, um, something like Foundry, um, as well as, uh, Cardinal Health, all different types of like healthcare providers. Um, so this is a intangible product here, uh, Foundry. This is going to be, this is going to continue to be very, very important. I'm very convinced. Now, um, giving y'all a deeper understanding of why. Um, so essentially, Foundry is very necessary and it's only possible because of the talent it attracts, right? Now, you're going to hear this narrative a lot in Palantir of, oh, the stock dilution is insane and stuff like that. Or like, oh, they're they're offering all these shares and stuff. Now, most of those shares go to employees. I don't know if people know that um, when they're espousing those narratives. And these employees, they're not just like average Joes, right? Uh, and a Palantir employee tends to be a very, very highly gifted, highly competent, highly well-read individual, highly well-practiced individual, right? And they know how to do um, algorithms and manage big data and stuff at, at the world's best level, like by far. Because Palantir actually often attracts talent from huge companies like Meta or Google, all these big tech companies, that's where Palantir is pulling a lot of talent from. How does Palantir do that? Now, if you listen to any of my prior videos, there are caveats that come with working at a big tech company, right? You 
you actually are under contract where you can't do certain side tech projects. Like um, if you work for Google, for example, you can't work on your own cloud project. You wouldn't be able to work on your own AI project, things of that nature. It just would be in the contract where, hey, tell us about something if you're trying to work on something and possibly take it commercial one day. And um, oftentimes those requests are going to get shut down anyway. So Google employees and stuff of that nature, they tend to get very comfortable just working for the company, putting all their energy into the company, just living a good life on a comfortable salary. Not everyone wants that, right? Some people maybe want equity in a company, maybe want to have their own NVIDIA moment one day, right? If I, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this. I believe well over half of the NVIDIA shareholders are, or sorry, employees are millionaires now. And um, I think something similar is, is going on with Palantir, here where I think the best, the best talent is congregating in a very intangible tech oriented solution based company. Um, that is Palantir. You know, they're solving intangible problems. I think there was always a niche for something like someone who had a competent tech, tech software to make uh, predictions based on things like big data in a way that no one else could. And that's where I thought I always thought Palantir really filled that niche right there. So super excited. Um, yeah, again, this is Foundry. Um, some of the best talent in the world continually works on this, continually makes this better. And oftentimes what happens with Palantir is these companies, they keep coming back to Palantir and Palantir keeps you know, getting bigger and bigger contracts. Now, this also keeps happening on the other Palantir um, platform that is Gotham. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Gotham is very much specific to uh, military intelligence, Department of Defense, things of that nature. Now, so these guys are big spenders as well. The US military, if you know anything about them, huge spenders, and they keep coming back to Palantir with, you guessed it, bigger and bigger contracts. Now, Gotham, phenomenal. I mean, you're not gonna find as much information if, if you dig really deep. Uh, it's, you're gonna be hard pressed to find deeper information. You could find a lot more information about something like Foundry, or there's also a third system we're gonna talk about in a second called um, Apollo, which actually, you need Apollo to use both Gotham and Foundry. So that's why I'm not giving it as much of its individual spotlight. But, um, this is, you know, this is super important for the U.S. military. They use this in wars that they're currently involved in, or shadow wars, whatever you want to call them, um, soft conflicts, you know. Uh, so, and whoever has the most, like, intel and things of that nature is ahead in the modern military. There's so much things like drone warfare, and um, I don't know if you know what HIMARS are, but they're, like, long-range artillery. And they can do like very precise strikes, but they from like miles away they can do this. So that's why um, it's so, like everything is so intel and data driven now with the military because very very powerful weapons can hit you from very far away at a moment's notice, and like you have to be just on top of everything. Um, so I guess we're gonna look at the uh, this is um, General Mattis who's like talking like oh yeah Palantir is like we this is really important so. <laughs> That gives you like some kind of idea of, yeah, this is super important for the US military. US military, huge, huge spenders. On top of that, you're really capturing a lot of private industry here with Foundry. So Foundry, Gotham, I think these are really the two main cash cows. Apollo, you really need that to make Palantir work. Um, it's kind of like a uh, more infrastructural, I guess, like system that's not as like specific or tailored to any certain industry the way Gotham is tailored to military, the way Foundry is tailored to um, private enterprises. So um, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and move on here, look at uh, Palantir's valuation kind of throughout time, um, give you all an idea of how it's been going on with this stock. Now, I don't really think it's per se expensive today because you can actually look back and this company has had that kind of premium from the market um, for quite a while here. Um, you know, you're looking at the last 12 months, uh, let's say like, you know, last, and you can see they just became profitable um, towards the end of 2023. Um, and into, you know, 2024 is really the year they've been profitable and they got the S&P 500 uh, inclusion as a result. So of course, congrats to Palantir on that one. And um, you can see here, like this stock isn't really essentially expensive because it's very in line with the um, valuation it's always had. Now, I don't necessarily think it's a buy today. I was buying the stock late 2022. You can see here like the price of sales, you know, eight or six. Um, I, that was a time where I think a lot of people were capitulating tech stocks, especially um, retail investors. And you'll see this because 
for example, like in that late 2022, we had a strong dollar environment and a strong dollar um, means that one dollar can buy assets for, you know, less of itself. So you need less dollars to buy the same amount of assets that you did in like a weaker dollar environment. Um, Because that's, you know, that's what dollar strength can do. You need less dollars to do the same job. Um, We had a strong dollar environment in 2022. There's other reasons the tech markets were crashing. Especially like, you know, Meta and stocks like that. They had their own company specific reasons as well as broader markets. Um, and you can see maybe, you know, maybe this drop was big money moving around, you know, this this drop right here. This is maybe a big move. We go, okay, we're expecting, you know, a strong dollar summer or maybe this drop right here, right? It's like, okay, it's going to be a strong dollar summer, right? It drops like 35%. And then, you know, this is this this other like 10%, 15% of the drop. That's like retail kind of capitulating out. And this whole kind of phase, I was like, all right, why don't I just like acquire some shares? Um, and like I said, I'm going to rock with this stock for the long haul, y'all. I'm really not, you know, uh, I've learned my lesson with NVIDIA and uh, selling tech stocks. It's 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 something you got to be pretty certain of um, and you got to do it very carefully. And I think only a SIP deals in absolutes, especially when it comes to tech stocks. And I'm very adverse to selling uh large chunks so that's why i took very very light profits on a stock like palantir um so yeah uh as and also you know just a little uh quick you know you got the tangible book value for share rising of course so i you know I, I do think this is a better company than it's ever been it's profitable it's um it's got decent you know a decent balance sheets uh probably the best it's ever been um good assets uh pay off more debt than they have before um guys this revenue changes this is what you know like 47 percent revenue growth um even like you know 16 17 percent revenue growth that's not typical of your typical sp 500 company and that's why um there's there is two sides of the story when it comes to something like stock dilution right is this a company that's diluting their stock because they're distressed or is this company diluting their stock because they foresee a plan so you know you can't you can't just uh pigeonhole them um if you have very limited information it's like okay this company is a loser just because they're diluting it just it's not that simple um nothing about the stock market will ever ever be that simple um you've got to really like see the numbers and like put together a story as well as you got to consider what the business is doing and you know it's a very multifaceted analysis right so go over the balance sheet here show you all this as you can see, um, decent enough assets to cover any kind of like liabilities they have, but it's not really like a company like swimming in debt. And I've talked uh, ad nauseum on this channel about um, sometimes you need a little of debt to kind of like propel your growth of the company and, and things of that nature. But there's, um, you know, especially in like, you know, 2020, 2021, this was a super like high flying kind of stock, like very, very risky to get involved. Um, so, but now today, guys, on S&P 100 and stuff, it's a very different business. It's so different much well-managed books, more profitable than it's ever been. Um, it's just, it's a different time for volunteer now. It's not so much of that Wall Street bets like hype stock anymore. It's actually becoming in its own, you know, it, it's entering its own prime, you know, at, right before our eyes. It's having its NVIDIA moment right now. So um, lastly, the cash flow statement, um, you can see here, different changes. Uh, their free cash flow growth is insane, y'all. Um, yeah insane like the, those numbers are insane and like i said that's sometimes the price you have to pay for stock dilution for elite growth on the company um you know something like this right so guys um and, and you can see here right the cash flow per share it, it was in the negatives this company was burning money burning money and now they're profitable they're crazy profitable all the money they were quote unquote burning i'm making that back now like in mass so and the contracts are probably only going to get bigger guys only going to get bigger the their system their ai their um their big data analysis algorithms only going to get better as you can see here um this was their uh their earnings guys 27 percent year over year revenue growth that is very impressive y'all so this company this is one of those tech companies where it's hot uh, it's very hot. They they saw a very niche thing in the market, which is um, kind of deeper level, deeper layer intercompany questions about 
is this supply chain actually the most efficient supply chain for us? Or, you know, if you're talking golf and you're talking about like the military, you know, are our high Mars trucks uh, able to make this mission where and are we like away enough from like enemy surveillance to move our high Mars over here? Um, so there's so many different questions that go on uh, at a deep, deep level when it comes to like management like this, you know, whether it's private enterprises or whether it is military and that's where technology fits in. That's where they fit in guys. Is, is they're like, okay, whoa, 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 the big data says this, can we consider this? Can we implement this in our plan? So it's another AI kind of based solution that people can uh, base their decision-making off of, right? Super important uh, that something like that exists going into, guys, we're going we're going into 2025. This is the, the future is right now. So with that being said, y'all, <laughs> I think I've said enough. Um, Palantir Technologies, I'm beyond, beyond, beyond excited for this company, guys. Uh, just, um, uh, there's not, you know, there's not much I can do. I can really just kind of like hold what I got and just kind of see where this goes. And um, yeah, I, of course I would buy more, you know, if it ever goes like below $10 a share again. on Because you know, there's something, you know, I'm expecting like possibly a 5 to 10% correction on S&P. Not, not that that would do that to Palantir, but before the year's end, right? I think something like that is in the cards. But um I would buy more of the stock basically if it goes around the cost basis I got it at. But other than that, I'm just going to watch it, hold it, and enjoy it. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm the Zoomer Value Investor signing out. Got a lot more fun stuff coming. Um, got some more videos lined up, y'all. All right. I've said enough. Peace.